Hi everyone, I'm Matt from Keysight, and today I'm going to give you a demonstration of the Vector Component Analyzer. Vector Component Analyzers, or VCAs, combine continuous wave measurements like S-parameters and gain with modulated signal measurements like EVM and ACP. This means if you have an amplifier or mixer that you need to characterize, you can get all the measurements you need over a single connection, and you don't have to switch between a network analyzer and a signal analyzer. I'm remoted into a unit on my computer, so let's get into the virtual demo. All right, so we're going to start by setting the frequency for our sweep. We're going to set a setter frequency of 28 gigahertz. And then I'm going to set a span of one gigahertz. And that'll give us a good picture of the operating range of this amplifier that we're looking at. And I'm going to change this to an S21 sweep. So we're looking at what's going through the amplifier. And then I'm going to turn a marker on, which will tell us the power level at the frequency that the marker is placed at. Now this is normally the part where you would connect your eCal and perform a basic S-parameter calibration, but since I'm thousands of miles away from the instrument, you'll just have to trust me that this instrument is calibrated and I've recalled a calibrated state file, so I'm going to skip that step. So now that channel 1's all set up, let's go to the channel setup option and copy all of the settings into a new window. Now in this new window, we want to do a power sweep on our amplifier. So we'll go to sweep and then select power sweep under the sweep type. And then going into the sweep setup menu, we're going from minus 10 to 10 dBm centered around the 28 gigahertz of this amplifier. So we want to find the compression point of this amplifier. So we'll go to search and then compression and saturation. And then there we can turn on the compression search marker. And that will tell us the one dB compression point of this amplifier. Now we've got a lot of decimals here, so I'm going to quickly change us to two decimal places. And now we can see the one dB compression point happens at about 3.84 dBm of input. So this tells us the input power at which there's one dB of compression at the output. For our modulation distortion test, we're going to subtract 10 dBm from this input power, and that'll put us close to, but not quite at, the 1 dB compression point. This is a great power level to be at to simulate real-world operation of the amplifier. Okay, so now let's look at how to set up the modulation distortion measurement. We will launch the modulation distortion measurement class, and then that'll launch the setup window. So once again, we'll set this carrier frequency to our 28 gigahertz, We'll leave the noise bandwidth at 100 hertz. And then the power level will be the one we calculated earlier at the 10 dB back off from the compression point. So next we'll configure the path. This value compensates for any gains or losses in the signal path between the signal generator and the DUT. And then we check the gain of the DUT, which is 10 dB in this case. And then any attenuation at the receiver for the VCA. Next, we're going to select the source for modulation. Uh, we'll do the signal generator that we've configured, and then we will load the compact waveform file that we're actually going to use for the measurement. And then we can autofill the measurement frequencies uh, based on what's in the compact waveform file. So next, we're going to choose our measurement parameters. There's a few we can choose from, and we're going to go with ACP and EVM. And then here, we can autofill all these frequencies, and then we are finished with our setup. Now that our measurement's set up, it's time to calibrate. So we'll go into the calibration menu and click Cal All. We'll select the modulation distortion calibration. And then in noise reduction, we can set the IF bandwidth to 100 Hertz, and that'll give us some good resolution on this measurement. We'll verify that we have the right connectors for our eCal module. And then we'll also have the calibration de-embed the adapter for the power sensor. And then we'll verify everything looks good, hit next, and then now it's time to connect the power sensor to port 1. So here's our power sensor. We're going to use that adapter that we specified earlier, and then just connect it right onto the measurement port. 
And after you connect the power sensor, click measure and the instrument will perform a power calibration. I've sped up these calibration clips for the purpose of this demo. And then once the power calibration finishes, it'll prompt you to connect a broadband load, which we're doing here. Once again, you go back into the instrument and click measure to perform the calibration on the load. And once that finishes, the instrument will prompt you to connect and open. So here now we're connecting our open to the test system. And then once this is connected, we'll go back into the instrument again and click measure so that I can calibrate on the open. After the open finishes, it'll prompt us to connect a short to our test system. So now, once again, we're looking at our test port and we're connecting an open to the end of it. And the short's connected, so we'll click measure again. And then now it wants us to connect port 1 to port 2, which is a through. So we have a through standard and we'll use that to connect our two test ports together. And then we will measure on this through. Once the through calibration is finished, it'll prompt us to connect our eCal module to ports 1 and 2. And now we will perform the electronic calibration. Now once the electronic calibration portion is finished, then we're done with our S parameter and power calibration, and we're ready to connect the device so that we can perform the source modulation calibration. So here's our amplifier again. We're going to connect ports one and two of the amplifier to ports one and two of our test system. And this is a powered amplifier, so you can see there's also a power cable connected to it. Now for the source modulation cal, we'll go to cal, other cals, then source modulation cal. Make sure that power, equalization, and LO feed through are checked, then click next. And we're gonna go ahead and overwrite what's in there. We've already connected our DUT, so we will click calibrate. And then once this calibration finishes, we are finished with calibration completely and we're ready to perform some measurements. Now what we're looking at here is power in, so let's add a new trace. And then we'll select P out two, so we're looking at the power coming out of the amplifier. Our EVM is a little high right here, so there's a couple things we can do about that. If we go to average bandwidth and noise bandwidth, we can reduce our noise bandwidth, and then that will significantly improve our EVM. We can also go to power, and then adjust the carrier level and increase that a little bit. And then that will help separate the input from the output. This instrument can do so much more than I can fit in one video. So if you want to learn more, please contact your local sales representative at the URL on the screen. Thanks for watching.